So we're first going to scan Sarah's neck. And as I usually advocate, I look for the brachial plexus in the supraclavicular fossa. I find the subclavian artery and the nerves. Color mode. Okay, here's the subclavian artery and the nerves are above it. I'm gonna scan upwards into her neck. B mode. And the scaling muscles come into view. Anterior scaling on the right and the middle scaling on the left and the brachial plexus is between them. Following the nerves up to the foramen, you can see them disappear. They're black and hypoechoic. Scanning up her spine, I'm looking at the cervical foramen and the nerves going into the foramen. And after above the level of C5, the posterior tubercle is larger than the anterior tubercle. So that's one way to distinguish between C4 and C3 versus C5 and C6. C6 is Chasternak's tubercle, which is a larger tubercle, the largest actually, of the anterior tubercles. So once again, the posterior tubercle is larger above C5, and that's more or less how we know we're around the level of C4. Also, the carotid artery will bifurcate, as you see here, at the level of C4 or C3 in most patients. Also, we see the sternocleidomastoid, and at this point, we could do a deep cervical plexus block by landing the needle on the posterior tubercle and injecting, which is good for surgeries such as carotid and arterectomy. Or we could do a superficial cervical plexus block, which gets the transverse cervical nerves, which is good for post-surgical pain syndromes of the neck or cervicalgia of the neck, as well as the supraclavicular nerve, which is ideal for, rib, for clavicle fractures and the lesser occipital nerve. Now, in this location, I tried to demonstrate on the patients before, the accessory nerve is sometimes hard to find, but it basically runs from the uh, jugular foramen out towards the sternocleomastoid and then laterally towards the trapezius as we go down the neck. And here's the trapezius, this large muscle on top. Here we see the carotid. And at the level of C6 is Chasternak's tubercle, which is going to hopefully come into view in a second. Right there. The large anterior process, anterior tubercle of C6. The target for the stellate ganglion would be behind the carotid artery on top of the longus coli muscle, where you could either come laterally to medially or come medial to laterally through the thyroid. And as I look at the thyroid here with the trachea behind it, I don't see any major blood vessels, but the superior and inferior thyroid artery may come into view as I raise and lower my probe trying to find it. Color mode. So here's the vasculature, and I'm searching for the thyroid vasculature. Here there is some blood more medial to the thyroid, some blood flow. And there we go. We're seeing a blood vessel inside the thyroid at the top. This is probably the superior thyroid artery. So this would be an ideal location to this stellate ganglion block if we were to go transthyroid. I normally use a 25 gauge, one and a half inch needle. It's usually long enough to get to the posterior border of the carotid artery beyond that anterior to the longus coli muscle, B mode. And the longus coli muscle is here lying on top of the cervical transverse process at the bottom of the screen. Okay, here I believe I found the C7 nerve root because there's no real anterior tubercle to it. I'm gonna identify the nerve in the center and make sure it's not a blood vessel. Color mode. Okay, it's not, but there is a blood vessel above it. So caution, I am a little low. I'm just gonna scan up superior. That's a vertebral artery. And it's gonna come posterior as I ascend and disappear into the bony canal, which we may be able to see it. There we go. Okay, so at the level of C6, the vertebral artery goes posterior into the foramen as it descends. So from posterior approach now, I can identify the cervical facet joints. They look like shingles on a house, and 
They're identified as the gaps in the bone. Years ago, before I started doing erector spinae plane blocks, I was performing what I called cervical facet plane blocks, which were basically the same thing. Landing the needle on the bone underneath the musculature and letting the local anesthetic diffuse superiorly and inferiorly along this to alleviate neck pain, cervicalgia, facet arthropathy, and it actually worked quite well. Now I typically do not do cervical facet injections unless I'm injecting them with PRP. What I typically will do is a lidocaine or bupivacaine medial branch block and use that for diagnostic purposes prior to PRP injection or radiofrequency ablation or peripheral neuromodulation.